Hello everyone. In this session, I would like to discuss about the developer window inside the browser. Let me open browser. This is my browser. Just open the developer window. How you can open the developer window means inside the browser, just right click on that. There has the last item inspect is there. Just click on that inspect. Now you can see one window. This is called as a developer window, developer tool window. This window, you can dock it wherever you want. You may dock in the right side or left side or bottom or come out from that browser, whatever, wherever you want to get. See, currently the highlighted one is like dock to bottom. If you want to dock in the right side, yeah, you dock in the right side like this. If you want to dock in the left side, you can dock the left side like this. If you want, come out from the browser, see, undock into a separate window, just click on this one. Now see this, it's like a separate window, separate window. Wherever you want, you can dock it. I want to dock the bottom. Now, in this session, I would like to discuss about few tabs in this developer window too. So I want to discuss about these tabs. One is like elements tab, another one is like console tab, the next one is like source, and application and the network. These are like very important tabs. Irrespective of your technology, it's like a React or Angular or QJS, whatever it is. As a UI developer, you should know minimum, you should have minimum idea on these tabs. Let's start with the first one, elements tab. What this elements tab contains means this elements tab contains two parts. If you observe, this is in the left side part and this one is like right side. In the left side, what it contains means you see this, it's like a HTML code or not. Whatever the content is visible to the end user. See here in the browser, this is my content or not. Let me open Google. Let me open Google. In the browser, see this, this content is visible to the end user or not. This content, if you want to show, they have to write some piece of code in the HTML or not. Whatever the code they written, that code you can see inside my elements tab, left side board CV, inside the elements tab, you can see it. For example, if you have doubt, okay, really that code is here or not, really that code here, there or not, if you want to check it, see this, this is the Gmail, right? I want to check this particular Gmail related code, where it is, I want to check it. How we can check means, just click on this particular button, see this, okay, see my more cursor, click on this particular button, now it's highlighted, just drag your cursor into your browser space, just click on the Gmail, click on the Gmail, that means which element code you want to see, click on that one. Now, if you observe here in the elements tab, see the highlighted part, if you observe, this is the code for that particular Gmail. Like this, you can check it. Now you can conclude like, yes, Whatever the visible, whatever the content is visible to the end user, that content related code is placed inside my body tag or not. If you want to check really, it's like inside the body tag or not, just right click on that one. Delete this element, the body element you can delete. If you delete this one, say this, there is nothing is there to visible. Nothing is there to visible. So you can control like what? Whatever the content is visible to the end user, that content related code is placed inside my body tag or not, inside my body tag. Okay, that is about the elements tab in the left side part. Come to the right side. In the right side, you can apply the styles for every element. So for Gmail only, I want to apply some styles, for example. So how we can, how we can see the code? One is like click on this one and select this. Otherwise, click right click on this one, inspect it. Now see, this is the code for my Gmail. If you want to apply some style, see in the elements dot style, my color is like red, my font size is like 50 pixel, my font weight is like gold. Like this, you can apply any type of styles for this particular element. So element tab contains what now? My element tab contains all your HTML content. At the same time, if you want to apply the styles, already applied styles are there, we can do it or not in the elements tab. Now come to the next tab, console. This console tab we used for log the console messages. That is one thing, log a console messages. That is one thing while running your case. The next one, very, very important one is 
this console tab we can use like a javascript editor javascript editor means you can run any javascript program inside this console for example if you want to run one javascript program create one function in javascript my function f1 now this is my function now console.logout f1 f1 call yes my function created if you want to call this function, you can call like the series, my function executed or not. Okay, it's a simple sample code. If you want to write any JavaScript code, just you can write inside the console, you can execute it. You can execute it. This is the way my console is going to work to log the messages as well as we can run any JavaScript code inside the console. The next one, come to the source one, come to the source one. This source tab we used for debugging purpose. We used it for debugging purpose. That is one thing. The next one, at the time of loading this particular URL, with that URL, how many source files are loading? That particular files we can see here. See, that if I refresh my page, see this. If I refresh my page, these many files and folders loaded inside the browser or not. See, if I open the images, if I open this one, see this, this Google image loaded inside the browser from that particular browser, okay, they taken and displayed here or not, or from browser they taken and displayed here or not. So at the time of loading this particular URL, with that URL, how many files and folders loaded, that files and folders we can use here, see, some of the external websites also loaded here. That is the use of source. Debugging purpose, I said second one. Okay, how means very simple thing. Now I want to write one for loop. Yeah, I equals to one, I less than three, I plus plus, I plus plus. I want to print my console.log of I. I already told you inside the console you can write any type of JavaScript code. Yes. Okay. One, two printed or not. I want to debug that code. How we can means now see this. If you want to clear the console, you can clear it. If you want the previous code, use a arrow and down arrow. If you want the next line here, next line, just click on shift enter, next line. If you want to execute this code, just click on enter. Here, I want to debug, right? Put the debugger keyword, put the debugger keyword. Now, I want to load this, I want to execute this code. So if I click on enter, see, now my console tab highlighted, it's moved to my source tab for debugging purpose because my debugger already exists. See this, it's moved to my source or not. Now first time, my i value one, i less than three, so that my condition satisfied. So my console.log i printed, okay, console.log one printed or not. Now go to my source again, i plus plus is nothing but what? i value one plus plus is nothing but two. Now my i value is like two, two, two less than three, yes, so that, it come to my body and execute my two or not. Now again, it go to I plus plus. Now see my two printed inside the console. Again, go to I plus plus. I plus plus is nothing but three. Is my three less than three? No, so that it is coming out of your loop or not. If you want to come out of your flow, just click on this button, line by line, click on this one. Click on this one, now see, like this you can debug and see your output or not. That is the use of source tab. The next one is like application tab. This application tab we used for store some data. Storage is it contains. If you want to store some data in your browser, okay, by using for the, by using this application tab inside this application tab by using local storage or session storage or index db or cookies by using these techniques we can store the data inside the browser. In application tab, just you can find the storages, either it is a local storage or either the session storage, or it's like a web SQL or index DB or cookies. See this is my local storage. This is the data already there or not. If you want to store the data in the local storage, write some JavaScript code here. Console local local storage dot set item is the method. Okay, which item you want me to store the key value you can put it. The value is like a searching, for example. Okay, searching yum, 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 like this. Now see inside the local storage, my data stored or not can be checked. Now, what about this local storage set item? Once you click on enter undefined again, undefined inside the console, you can say like a confirmation message to you, like that you can understand. Yes, this statement executed without any errors. 
Now go to my application tab. Can you check in the local storage? Can you find somewhere my name is such in there or not? Like this, we can store in the local storage or session storage or index in the SQL. All these things we can use like the storages. If you want to get some more idea on the storage, go to our website, uijavakit.com, go to JavaScript. Here, we have the concept called as a browser storages. Here, you can find the content. Now come here, the next one is like a network. Why we go for this network means, now, for example, if you want to show this particular page, that means my page placed somewhere, you have to request, you have to request it to that guy, hey, can you come and load here? Like this, you have to send a request and get a response or not. You have to request to that particular page or not. That page may be in my local mission, maybe it is running in the server, maybe it's running like a REST API call, whatever it is. Okay, I have some content. I need to send a request to that guy to get that content. That content you are requesting to HTML file or you are requesting to CSS file or you are requesting to one of the Java REST API call, whatever it is. Okay, that requests and responses are registered in the network tab. If I refresh my page, see this, how many requests are going to the server here? 25 requests, 26 requests go to the server and 50 series, 35 requests go to the server to load this particular page. How much data transferred? 74.1 KB transferred or not? Like this, you can find all your requests. Okay, this is my request. If you come to my response, okay, see this, this is the response. You can get it. This is my preview. See, this is only the Gmail and it's going visible or not. Like this, we are sending and we are sending the request to this particular one. If you come here, to whom you send the request? To this guy, you send the request. Request must is like a get. Which, which response you get it? This is the response you get it. This response you only displayed here or not. Okay, these are the mainly frequently used tabs as a UI developer. Thanks guys, thanks for watching.